welcome everyone to the official unveiling of our new exhibit, A Visual History of Roy Chapman Andrews, the Voice of Native Son. This event is being hosted as a partnership between the Beloit Public Library and the Roy Chapman Andrews Society. I'm Steve Babers, president of the Society, whose mission is to inspire scientific discovery. Andrews was one of the most famous explorers of the 20th century, and he was the only lawyer to ever make it on the cover of Time Magazine. So far, <laughs> I want to thank Nick Damasis, library director and society board member, and his staff for making this event possible here tonight, both the venue and financial assistance. We encourage you to peruse the 10 exhibit banners behind you as you walk through on the way in. Chronicle Andrew's life, and you'll also find a display case that opens side of artifacts that were donated generously by Roy's granddaughter, Sarah Appleby, who we'll be hearing from shortly. And the exhibit will be up through next month, so there is plenty of time to see everything, but I'm warning you, there's a lot to see, so you better start early, like tonight, on the way out. This presentation is part of a bigger effort part of our annual Roy Chapman Andrews Society Distinguished Explorer Award event, which honors an internationally renowned scientist and explorer. This year we're commemorating the 100th anniversary of Andrews' first Central Asiatic expedition to the Gobi Desert by honoring our award recipient, dinosaur paleontologist and professor Philip Curry of the University of Alberta. Dr. Curry will be sharing his own experiences exploring in the Gobi Desert and elsewhere in his public presentation, which will be held on Friday afternoon at 4.30 right here in the library. So please come back for that. As you can imagine, uh, this project required a lot of planning and financial support. In fact, we've discovered that it takes a village to raise an exhibit. And so I'd like to recognize the people and organizations that have made this possible by turning your attention to the front there, where we have a sponsor page not only for this exhibit, but also for our overall EDA. And you'll notice there are a lot of people and a lot of organizations on it, and we're greatly appreciative, particularly because the last two years we were covid out in terms of fundraising. So uh, this sort of support is needed to have programs like this for you. And one organization I would like to single out right now for making this exhibit truly possible, and that is Wisconsin Humanities. We applied for a grant through the Recovery Act and uh, last fall, and it was accepted in November, and that was really the impetus and the financial means that made the whole thing happen. So big thank you to Wisconsin Humanities as well as the folks you see on the poster. But in addition, I want to single out some others who are not on the poster, but the exhibit would not have happened without. And I'm going to start with Carol Mankevich, who's a board member of our society and the primary author of those banners. So thanks so much, Carol. You've become the, the uh, de facto historian in Beloit now in your retirement. And <laughs> person essential for this whole operation is Ruth Carlson sitting over there. <laughs> if you don't know Ruth uh, and the role she plays, she is our quarterback of the Roy Chapman Andrews Society as well as our administrative assistant. And she and her husband Keith who's sitting over here uh, were the ones who went down to Texas and drove down in March to pick up the memorabilia, some of which you see obviously above and beyond the uh, job description 
also like to acknowledge the Minuteman Press of Gainesville. They were the ones who did the design and layout and printing of the banners on short loads that were really being proof for us. And in, in kind support tonight from Nancy Clark Matter of Beloit Filmworks, uh, who's recording this in the back, and also uh, being assisted by Greg Gerard of the Beloit International Film Festival, also in the back. So thanks to both of you. Celebrity and is author of 16 nonfiction books that have earned two dozen star reviews and numerous awards. Her work has been recognized statewide by the Wisconsin Library Association and nationally by the Children's Book Bill of Washington, D.C. Of particular relevance for this evening is her first book entitled Dragon Bones and Dinosaur Eggs, a photobiography of the store Roy Chapman Andrews. I also want to point out that Anne is one of the founding members of the Roy Chapman Andrews Society and remains a de facto board member to this day. <laughs> Whether you want to be or not, <laughs> And tonight she'll be introducing the visual history exhibit and providing more background information about Andrews' life. Please welcome Anne Lawson. <laughs> So I assume you're all coming back because that is that is the, the main show. I have never been a warm-up act before, so I'm pretty excited. Um, I don't sing and dance, but I'll try to tell stories, and maybe I'll have come up with a few that you haven't heard before. But I think that um, you've probably heard them all in, at some time or another through the years. And he, having that introduction um, jogged my memory and reminded me, I mean, I see so many people here I know, and uh, reminded me that when, when Dragon Bones and Dinosaur Eggs came out in the year 2000, Sarah Cruz, who's here, Wade Sarah, um, was it, the director of the alumni office and arranged for a book selling at Lloyd College. And I bet some of you all were there because I think the whole town turned out and bought copies until they ran out. And I've never signed more books before and after for, I think, just about anything. So um, I, I do have such a, a love for Beloit and Roy Chapman Andrews has just deepened that and um, kept me hooked here uh, ever since. So, um, I'm supposed to, to introduce this exhibit. I have to re-emphasize the debt that we owe to Carol um, Mankiewicz for this exhibit that she put together. I know there were other people involved as well, but um, I have um, not always willingly been the go-to person for history for Roy Chapman Andrews as I've moved on to other books and other responsibilities. And, and yet I couldn't escape that. And it's so, it is so nice to have an ally, to have a successor to, um, you know, you come up now, Carol, you can just finish the, the, um, the program. But thank you for that. And I, I see so many board members, former board members, wave your hands so we can see. It takes, it really does take a village. And the fact that we have kept this going as long as we have, it, it makes me so proud, I'm so proud of the Roy Chapman Andrews Society and the longevity when we started it 23 years ago, we didn't know what it was going to turn into, but I don't think any of us imagined we would be doing webinars that are, I guess that's not what you call it, but Zoom, international Zoom sessions this morning and, and uh, bringing in speakers from, uh, recipients for the award from other countries uh, year after year and, and from a, a, a doing research from around the world. So, um, so well done, Beloit and Roy Chapman Andrews Society. And this is this lady that um, was introduced to you earlier. This is Sarah Appleby, the granddaughter of Roy Chapman Andrews. And that Ruth and Steve um, were able to uh, liberate from her various uh, memorabilia and 
an inheritance of, of, um, of memories from Ray Chapman Andrews. She is such a good soul. I met her many years ago in Texas and I'm incredibly jealous that they got to go without me. Um, but she wanted to be here and in place of being here in person has sent a video. We're gonna make sure the volume is right. If necessary, we'll back it up. But, um, but this is Sarah Appleby speaking straight to you. And uh, it'll, let's see, I'm gonna back it up. You wanna? Um, this is the one logistic that we forgot to test ahead of time. So how do we problem solve this, Wyatt? <laughs> Too many of you showed up. So. Yeah, we kind of knocked it off early. so delighted to know it's going to be up for a, a, a full month and more yet. And uh, Steve's right. You're probably going to have to visit more than once to take it all in. It's just loaded with gems. And uh, I'm going to go through it uh, panel by panel just to remind you of the riches that are there. And of course, starting with an introduction, because every good thing should, and um, mapping out the chronology that unfolds in the rest of the exhibit. And uh, we are especially happy for the hometown connection that we share.